five, four, three, two, one. I'm back today with another bookish tag video. Hello book friends, I'm Jen and welcome to my reading life and welcome to another tag video. Today I am going to do the 54321 tag video. I saw this on Tiffany's channel. She is at Beautiful Minutia. And if you're not following Tiffany, you should definitely go over and check out her channel. She has such a wonderful channel. She loves classics. I get so many good recommendations from her for that genre. So if you're into classics, definitely check out Tiffany. She also reads lots of fantasy books if that's something that you enjoy. And even though that's not one of my go-to genres, I just love listening to Tiffany talk about books and her channel is really lovely. So definitely check her out and I will have her channel linked in the description box below along with her video of this tag. As I said in the beginning, this is the 54321 challenge and I am going to be sharing with you five, four, three, two, one different bookish things. Grab yourself a beverage of choice. I have a warm mug of tea here and I'm going to take a little sip and we'll get going. I will have all of the questions for this tag listed down in the description box below. If there are any of the questions you would like to answer in the comments, I would love to hear what you have to share. So let us get started. The first question is, what are five recent five star reads? And I just went through Goodreads and looked at the most recent books that I had listed as five stars. And I tried to pick ones that I haven't some of them I had talked about quite a bit on my channel. So I picked five. Technically it's six because my last one is actually two books in a series and I just couldn't pick one over the other. So, but let us get started with the most recent five star read that I had, which I just finished yesterday. And that is Near Neighbors by Molly Clavering. And I read this for Spinster September. This is my first Spinster September read of the month. And it was a complete winner for me. I just adored this story. We are following uh, Miss Balfour and her sister has recently passed away. And so now she is living alone in the house that they used to share. And she's led a very sheltered life because her sister was not a very nice person and really kind of ruled the roost. And so Dorothea, who is the remaining sister, um, doesn't have any friends. She doesn't really do much. She doesn't get out much. But now with the death of her sister, her life sort of opens up and there is a family that lives next door that has three daughters and one son and the mother. And they live a very full, raucous, uh, really fun loving kind of life. And uh, one of them one day after the death of the sister decides to go over and kind of give her condolences to Dorothea and they strike up a friendship and we kind of go from there. And so we follow what happens to Dorothea and we also follow what happens to the family next door and and this was just full of such wonderful, wonderful scenes of coziness, of having tea, of getting together, of making a home feel more homey and a family life. And I just loved everything about it. Plus, there was something really funny in this book. There was a phrase in here. And two of the characters are having tea together. And one of the characters refers to themselves as tea jennies. Tea jennies? I've never heard this phrase before. And because it had my name in it, I had to, of course, go and look it up. And a tea jenny is somebody who loves tea, who is addicted to drinking tea. And it is a Scottish phrase. I was like, this suits me to a T. <laughs> I was like, never was there a, fr a phrase more perfectly suited to describe me unless it was book Jenny. Book Jenny might be even better. Tea and book Jenny? Hmm. Yes, I think that might do it. But that just made me love this book even more that I learned something new in here. And you can refer to me as tea Jenny from now on if you'd like. <laughs> And then the next five star read is a book that I just 
wanted to hug when I finished it, and that is Love and Saffron by Kim Fay. I have to give a shout out to my friend Meg, who has a lovely new podcast that you should all check out called Meg's Reading Room. I will link it in the description box below. It is absolutely delightful. If you like my channel, you will love Meg's podcast. I had asked on Instagram for some book recommendations and Meg recommended this one to me and it was a spot on recommendation is this is an epistolary novel and we follow the friendship between two women. One is young in her 20s and the other woman I think is maybe in her 50s, early 60s. And the younger woman lives in Los Angeles and the older woman lives in the Pacific Northwest. The friendship begins when young Joan writes to Imogen, who has a, a column in a magazine and she writes sort of a fan letter and the two of them strike up a correspondence and you just follow their friendship um, through food and love <laughs> and you learn about the two of them and what is going on with their lives and they just share such an affinity for food. If you enjoy foodie memoirs, something about this very much reminded me of Lori Colwyn's Home Cooking. It had that sort of coziness to it and if you like stories of friendship, if you like epistolary novels, I can't recommend this one enough. I already want to reread it. I actually had checked it out from the library and then I wanted a copy of it for my own. And so I found this at Half Price Books recently and it had to come home with me. It is a huggable book. So good. And then my next five star read is Hooked by Sutton Foster. I have talked about this. This is Sutton Foster's memoir where she talks about how crafting saved my life. And if you don't know Sutton Foster, she is a Broadway actress and television actress. She's been on the TV show Younger. That may be what most people know her for if you don't know her from Broadway. But I saw her on Broadway when she was very young and starting out in Thoroughly Modern Millie, which was her breakout role. And I've loved her ever since then and this memoir was so wonderful and I really loved how she incorporated crafting and how it really helped her in her life and it has inspired me to try my own hand at crochet which I haven't started yet but I intend to in fact this weekend if I have some downtime I'm going to get my crochet hook out and my little book that I bought and watch some YouTube videos and give it a go I will share how that goes with all of you if you're interested. Anyway, I really love this. If you like memoirs, I actually listened to the audiobook of this, which Sutton Foster reads. Highly recommend that. But then it was, again, just another book I wanted to have in my possession so I can reread it and just kind of refer to it again. It's just, it's so lovely. And then next is another book that I've gushed about that I feel is huggable. Another recommendation from my friend Meg, and that is Sipsworth by Simon Van Bui. And this is about an older woman who has spent most of her life living in Australia, but she has recently returned to England. And she's really just kind of going about her day-to-day -day life, living a very solitary existence, kind of just waiting to die. I mean, she's not really ill or anything, but she's older and she's, I think, kind of given up on life a little bit. And then a mouse comes into her life. And that's all I'm going to say. I adored this book and I'm almost even tempted to read it again before the end of the year. So we'll see, I might do that. Again, this was another book I listened to on audio and then really just wanted a hard copy for my shelves because I want to read it in its physical format and maybe annotate it a little bit because there were some lovely passages in here. Simon Van Bui is a fabulous writer. I have read one of his short story collections and I have another one on my shelf, which I'm going to read this winter because it's called Love Begins in Winter seems appropriate for a winter read and uh, short stories are always nice to just dip in and out of. And then my final five star read is actually two reads and that is the first two books in the Chadwick Family Chronicles which is Looking Forward and Holding On by Marsha Willett and I you guys know by now I love myself a family saga and this is 
yet another one that is just utterly delightful. Set in Devon, we follow the Chadwick family as uh, some of the younger members of the family are coming to live with their grandmother at the Keep, which is the family home, after the death of their parents and older brother. And it's just all about the family, how the children adjust, how the grandmother adjusts. Um, she has two people who work for her at the keep and they're really more like family than people who work for her. And it's just all about their lives. And I still have the third book to finish. And then there are a couple more books that I think are kind of loosely involved in the trilogy, but I think the three books are sort of the main crux of the story. And I'm hoping to get to book three, which is Winning Through uh, this month. So I just love these. Fantastic. If you like things like the Cazalet Chronicles or Rosamond Pilcher, then 100% give the Chadwick Family Chronicles a try. They're wonderful. Did I say wonderful a whole bunch? Wonderful. <laughs> What else can you say about five star reads but that they are wonderful? Tea break. The next question is what are four auto buy authors? And I'm taking this to mean the same thing that Tiffany took it to mean when she did this tag video, and that is books by authors that you would pre-order if they had a new book coming out. And I would say these days it's few and far between where I have a modern author who I really just can't wait for their next book to come out. And when I started thinking about it, like most of the authors that I buy who are writing today are mystery authors. <laughs> and two on this list are mysteries. My fourth selection for this I'm kind of fudging it a little bit, but you'll understand why when I get to it. But the first auto by author for me, which I could not leave off this list, is of course Louise Penny. She has a new book coming out. I think it comes out late October, early November. The Gray Wolf is the next installment in the Inspector Gamache Three Pines mystery series. I have read every single book in the series. I have been pre-ordering her books for about the last seven or eight books. I just, I can't get enough. I love her writing. I love the way she looks at the world and looks at life. And I love Armand Gamache as a main character. He is a fantastic detective. And I will continue to buy her books as long as she keeps writing them. Even if she started a new series, 100% I'd be on board for that too. And then the second author that is auto buy for me, another mystery author, and that is Deborah Crombie. And her Duncan and Gemma mystery series is one that I have just adored for so, so long. Um, my roommate um, back in my 20s, she introduced me to Deborah Crombie. And Deborah Crombie is an American, but she writes a British mystery series. She spent a lot of time in England. Uh, she does a lot of research there. I never would have known she was an American if I hadn't read that in the author bio. So I think she does a really good job of making the book feel like it's written by someone who has grown up and is English. So that is a wonderful mystery series. And the next auto by author for me is Claire Keegan. When I read Small Things Like These a couple of years ago, I loved it so much. I read it twice in one year. Claire Keegan is a master of saying so much with so little. Her books are incredibly slim. Um, she's written a collection of short stories that I've read. I think there's only like two or three short stories in the collection that I have, which is so late in the day. I have read Foster, which I absolutely loved by her. And I will buy whatever else she puts out next because I think she is a brilliant, brilliant author. And I just, I love her books and I love her very sparse and concise writing style. It's just, she has a precision that I think very few authors are able to get across. Um, and she does it brilliantly. And then the last author that is auto buy for me is not an author that's currently writing. This author is not alive anymore, but her books are being republished. And because of that, I'm adding her to this list. And that is D.E. Stevenson. And 
As you know, I adore D.E. Stevenson and Dean Street Press's furrowed middle brow imprint has been reprinting D.E. Stevenson's books. I know there are some other publishing houses that I believe have rights to some of Stevenson's works. Um, so the first Mrs. Tim book, which is really difficult to get here in the U.S., uh, Dean Street Press was not able to get the rights for that, though they have the remaining books in the Mrs. Tim series available. And they have published quite a few titles by her, but I'm pretty sure there are more that they haven't published. And if they did, I would immediately snatch those up. So that makes her an auto buy author for me because some of her titles are a little more elusive and difficult to track down. And if Dean Street Press gets a hold of them, or any publisher for that matter, decides to reprint them, I will 100% buy them. The next question is what are three favorite genres of yours? And I am going to play very loose with the term genre because genre itself is kind of limiting and I think when we think about categories of books we put them into different subcategories or subgenres. We also classify books by the age range they're designated for. So I'm gonna play fast and loose and I am just going to share with you the groupings of types of books that I enjoy reading. <laughs> and for my first genre slash category of books, I am going to say British women's fiction, mostly written in the early to mid 20th century. That is my sweet spot at the moment. Like I mentioned in the last question, Dean Street Press has been republishing so many of those books. I also think Persephone Books does an amazing job of republishing women authors that would otherwise have been forgotten for the ages. And I am just really enjoying diving into these books that I'm so thankful that there is the internet and social media for introducing me to all of these books that I don't know that I would have discovered otherwise. So sometimes good things come out of the internet. <laughs> and then the next genre slash category of books has to be mysteries. So when I say mysteries, I definitely mean mysteries. I'm not talking about thrillers. For me, thrillers fall into their own category. And I've certainly read my fair share of thrillers over the years, but my tolerance for thrillers is much, much lower than it used to be. And I'm still open to reading a thriller, but it cannot involve harm or danger to children in any way. That's, that's really a no-go for me. Ever since I became a mom, that's just something that I really have difficulties reading about in any genre. And then my final favorite genre slash category, this is not a genre, it's definitely a category of books, and that is, of course, middle grade books. I love me some middle grade. I particularly love a young, plucky female character, main character, heroine. I think those plucky young female characters, they just harken back to my childhood and the types of books I really loved reading when I was a young girl and the kind of girl that I sort of aspired to be but never was. Plucky is not in my job description <laughs> as much as I wish it was, but I am just a little more reserved than plucky would call for, but I love to read about it in middle grade books or any books for that matter. Give me a plucky female character and I am there, I am sold. The next question is, name two favorite places to read. That's for sure the easiest question in this tag, and my two favorite places to read are here in my reading room, sitting on my chaise lounge, which is right across from me. I'll uh, throw a picture of it in here for you to see if you've never seen it before, and definitely give my reading room tour a watch if you'd like to see a little bit more close-up details of my chaise lounge and my reading room and where I sit and read. It's just my favorite place in the house and it's so cozy and full of books and it's the best <laughs> and I read here every single day for at least some period of time and then my other favorite place to read is in bed I have always always and forever since I was a very very little girl read before bed whether that was my parents reading to me when I was very little or me reading myself um, as soon as I was able to do that I have always there have been so few nights 
that I have not ended my day with a book in my hand. I find it so soothing, so relaxing. I love being in bed. It's so cozy. I have my pajamas on. I'm all curled up under the blankets and I have a good book or two or three. <laughs> Sometimes these days I have so many books stacked up on the bed with me. My husband is like, what are you reading? <laughs> but yes, I do love to read in bed. Always have, always will. What's better than curling up in bed with a book? And the final question for this tag is a book you promise to read really soon. And I have been doing a lot of thinking. My birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks. And I've been thinking long and hard that I want to curate a TBR for October that just really feels like me and the books that I want to read right now. And so I've already been kind of stacking books and setting them aside and thinking about the things I want to read in October. The number one book that I want to read is the start of a series that I know everybody on here cannot believe that I have never read because it just feels right, right smack dab in the middle of my reading wheelhouse. And that is Village School by Miss Reed. Yes, I know. I cannot believe I haven't read any Miss Reed ever. This year, this coming month, October is going to be the year I start to read Miss Reed. I am going to read Village School. I am hoping to start it. My birthday is the 1st of October. I'm planning to start this on my birthday. And I think this is going to be a wonderful way to usher in my birthday month. And then I can finally say that I have read a Miss Reed book and I'm hoping this just prompts me to continue on through the series. I think I have the first three books in the series so I can definitely get myself going and I'm hoping by reading this first book it will prompt me to then pick up the next books in the series in quick succession so I can get myself on my way to having read a number of the Miss Reed books but I do think I'm going to love her. I'm going to predict that this will be a five-star read for me just based purely on its coziness and I think that's exactly what I want in October. That is it. That is all of the questions for the 54321 tag. That was really fun. I really enjoyed that. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you wanted to answer any of the 54321 questions. And if you have a booktube channel and you haven't done this tag yet and you want to, then consider yourself tagged. I'm not going to tag anybody specifically. I never know who to tag in these videos. If you're a booktuber and you like to be tagged in tag videos, can you leave that in the comments below and I will make a little list and that way I can be sure to tag you in the future. But yes, please, anyone who wants to do this, I will definitely watch your videos because this is really fun. Thank you as always for watching this video, for liking, subscribing, and leaving those comments. I always love to discuss all the bookish things with you guys and I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye!